All right, Algebra 1, Lesson 60. This is on geometric solids as well as prisms and cylinders. Now, I'm going to show you quite a bit from the book for a minute just because I don't want to draw them all up there, okay? Hopefully you can see that um, right here, even look at your book on page 242. We have a right triangular prism, a right circular cylinder, a regular square pyramid, a right circular cone, and a sphere. Now, geometric solids are figures that have three dimensions, um, length, width, width, and height, okay? Now, um, whenever you see the word right, uh, regular, what that means is uh, all the sides are equal on the base, okay? So when you hear regular, something was regular, a regular octagon, or a regular square, or a regular, whatever, parallelogram, um, what you're saying is regular means that all the sides were equal, okay? So that base, the bottom right here, if it's regular means that if this is five inches, then this is five inches, and this is five inches, and this is five inches, okay? Just to kind of give you a clarification, okay? Now, uh, let's see, the, a prism, and that's what we're going to talk about in just a minute. Hopefully you can see this right triangular prism, right rectangular prism, right trapezoidal prism and right pentagonal prism. That just means right means uh, it has square corners, perfect 90 degree square corners, okay? Uh, be like a picture frame corner, it's perfect, it's right, okay? That's what that means. Now, um, on here, whenever you see a prism, basically what a prism is, let's pay attention to this right triangle prism. A prism, I want you to see these triangles. It was as if I would take a stack of triangles and stack them up one by one by one by one by one exactly the same and all the way through this entire um, uh, figure it would make the same shape. That's what a prism is. means that I could stack the same triangle on top of each other all the way down. It doesn't change shape. Prism, that's what that means. Okay. Check out this right rectangular prism. It would be as if I took a, a rectangle and laid a thousand rectangles on top of each other because it has the same exact measurement all the way through. That's what a prism is, okay? Just to give you a quick little um, review. Now, a cylinder um, is like a prism, okay? But uh, prisms, um, well, it is a prism because it goes all the way through, a circle all the way through, okay? But because it doesn't have square corners, um, it's, not a, it's not considered a polygon. Um, it's actually, it says right here, a prism, a cylinder is like a prism except that the bases are closed curves. The curve is closed. It's not a square or a, any kind of um, figure that has many lines that connect. Okay, so it's just one line that connects. It's a curve. So, we're going to talk about a few things, and the main thing I want to teach you, you can look over this and maybe even read some of the definitions that would probably help you in this lesson, um, to go in and read some of these bold. I'm not going to go over every single one of them. You can read those. It's just like me reading them to you, so you can go in and do that. But I'm going to go in and teach the part of the lesson that they're wanting you to understand and know. Okay? And so the very first thing is to find the volume of prisms and cylinders. Okay? And so let me start with teaching you that um, to find the volume of something. Now, I want you to understand what volume is. Um, before we even get into that, I want to explain. So, if I went to a carpet store and picked out a piece of carpet to fill my floor, that would be me finding the area. Okay, so area is just a surface. Like, uh, let's say this floor that I'm standing on right now, I wanted to find a big park carpet floor. I would say, okay, it's about, well, you want to find the exact measurement, but just to kind of teach you, it's about 10 feet long by 15 feet. So, I need... Uh, a, a, a piece of carpet 10 by 15 and that's what I would tell the people um, and you could even multiply 10 times 15 as 150 square foot that's what you would tell them because area is feet squared or square foot okay just so you know or if I'm not doing feet inches or whatever so that's what area is volume you have to see is something deeper it's not just a piece of carpet it's length width and then also height so the best way to explain what volume is, it almost be like an aquarium, okay, that you fill up with water. It has a length, it has a width, and then it also has a height that you have to fill, okay? So that's what volume is. Volume is three dimensions, length, width, and height. 
That's why when you're measuring something with volume, it would be feet cubed because there's three measurements that you're multiplying. Length, width, and height. Okay? Now, it doesn't always have to be feet, but just kind of explain this stuff. So, Okay, so if we're going to find the volume of a prism or a cylinder. Uh, I'm going to draw, <laughs> attempt to draw, rather. Okay, this picture that they've got on page 244. Okay, and it looks like it's a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so kind of like uh, what Superman wears on his chest, <laughs> sort of. Okay, so now um, this is the top piece. And I'm going to attempt to draw this well, hopefully. Okay, now hopefully you're going to be able to see it in the object that I'm drawing. Got it. Hopefully you can see that, sort of, in a 3D image. Um, let me go ahead and... Make these dotted and this dotted. That may help even more. Okay, so that kind of shows you what image we're doing. Okay, so basically what you're going to do, what volume is, is you're going to find the area, write this down, area of the base times the height. That's what volume is. Volume is the area of the base times the height. So what is our base? This pentagon, okay, these two on the top and bottom, those are our bases, all right? So we're going to find the area of this, just like it was a weird piece of carpet, and then you're going to times it by the height, okay? So that's what we're doing. That's what volume is. Now, they tell me, um, they go in and tell me what the area of the base is, because though we didn't even have to figure out um, what the area is. They just tell us the area of the base of this right pentagonal prism is 28 centimeters squared. So this equals 28, I'm going to have to do it, get a different marker, sorry about that, 28 centimeters squared. Why squared? Because there's two measurements. We're taking a length times width on this, okay? So this was length times width, something like that, okay? Gave us 28 centimeters squared for the area, okay? But that's just the area of the base. Now we're going to have to multiply it times the height, and the height is... Uh, 10 centimeters. So we take the area of the base, 28 times the height, 10. Okay, so this is centimeters squared, this is centimeters. So then 28 times 10 equals 280, and since we're measuring now 3, because volume is 3, different measurements, um, area, length, and width, and then height, so that's 3. So final answer would be 280 centimeters cubed. Okay, that's how we would do that problem. Now, that's when you're finding the volume, okay? And if this was a circle, you would take, or a cylinder, for example. If you had a cylinder, you would take the area of the base. The bases are circles. So you take the area of the base and then times it by the height, okay? So that's how you would find the volume of a prism or a cylinder, all right? Now, they're going to move to teaching you something called the surface area of cylinders and prisms. So today is all about cylinder and prisms. Cylinder. Okay? So you're going to find the surface area of cylinder and, pris and prisms. Cylinders and prisms. Now, I want to show you something real quick. Okay? I brought, got this can of green beans. Okay? Now, um, whenever you are trying to find uh, you're going to learn this word, lateral. And I've taught it to you before if you're used to my uh, videos. Lateral surface area. Surface area is just me taking, uh, this is one surface, I find the area of that. This is another surface on the bottom, I find the area of that. Surface on the side, I find the area of that. And then I add up all my areas and that would give me the surface area. Area of all the different surfaces. Okay? We're doing lateral surface area. And what, la sorry, what lateral surface area is, lateral means this part in the middle that you can't really tell what it is. But when I open it up, hopefully you can see that that is a rectangle. Okay? 
So that is called the lateral surface area, okay? I don't know what else you would call it. That's why they came up with the name a lateral because um, this area that's in the middle, you would have to name it something, square, rectangle, whatever. They, they are wanting you to know that, yeah, it makes a rectangle, but it's the lateral surface area. That's what they're calling it, okay? So lateral surface area is when you open something up, okay? And so we would find out what all this um, portion is at the top, how long it is, okay? And we're going to learn that in just a minute. Let's look at something else. Let's say I took this and we're going to find the lateral surface area. It would be as if I opened it up like a box of cereal, okay? So this would be the lateral part that we're going to add. And I'm going to show you how to do it, but I just wanted to show you lateral. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. Um, if you didn't write down that volume equals the area of the base times the height, you need to go in and do that and start it. That's a formula you need to know, uh, especially as you start taking the ACT, etc. Okay, um, the lateral surface area is this. I'm going to write this down. Um, is the perimeter of the base, the perimeter of the base times the height. Perimeter of the base times the height. So, um, that means, let's look at this object, this base is a rectangle. So, let's say this was 3 inches by 1 inch, 3 inch by 1 inch. So, this would be uh, 3 times 1, okay? Or, I'm sorry, we're doing perimeter, sorry. Uh, so, this would be 3 plus 1, 4, Three more, seven, one more, eight. So that's the perimeter of the base. Now that's important for you to know because watch what happens. When I open it up, I get one plus three plus one plus three, right? Which equals eight. So that gives us our answer. That's the perimeter. One plus three plus one plus three, which equals eight, which was became our lateral portion that we had to write down. How long is this? Eight. How do we know that? Because we added 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3. Okay? Now, that's the perimeter of base times height. So let's actually do one of these problems and not just show you some things. Okay? Now they tell me, I uh, probably should have left that figure up here. I'm going to draw that pentagon again. Oh, shouldn't have taken it off. Okay, so now... They tell me 15, and then they tell me 8 right here. Now, they're wanting me to find the lateral surface area of this right prism. Now, we're not finding the volume. We're finding uh, the lateral surface area. So, what you're going to do would be like taking this and cutting it and extending, and it would look something like this when we extended it. Now, Hopefully you can see that this extended would give me something that looks like this. Once I extended it, it would look something like that when I opened it up. Those are all the creases from each of the things. Now, if each of these are 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, and 8, right, then what is the perimeter so far? 8 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 40. So that's our lateral surface part that we're wanting to know, the perimeter. Okay? That gives me 40. All right? So we take the perimeter, 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. We take the perimeter of that and multiply it by the height, which is 15. So 40 times 15 would give us 600 meters. Okay? squared because we're doing two different ones. 40 times 15, that's two measures, two. So we found the surface area, <clears throat> okay? So hopefully you can see how we did that since each of those were eight and it was important that they told us it was a regular pentagon, which means all the sides are equal. Regular means that, remember? Okay, so eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight was 40. And then we take the perimeter of the surface part or the lateral part and then we multiply it by the height. Okay, remember that was that formula. All right, so 
Um, that is lesson 60.